Hello and welcome to week 33 of this 52 week series for the Web Pro on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to dig in, this is the third week regarding ARR, Application Request Routing, and actually today's lesson is not necessarily pertaining to just ARR. This can happen with the F5 load balancers, Big IP, or any other load balancer for that matter that works as a reverse proxy. And so when we deal with a re reverse proxy, we run into some interesting issues that troubleshooting the web nodes and your web developers may start complaining about. And so I want to take a look at this. I encourage you to watch the previous weeks if you haven't yet, and because I'm digging in kind of deep here and jumping in with both feet. So let's take a look at what we have. And actually, as a side, I should have done this earlier. A few weeks ago, I had one of, uh, one of the viewers, Greg Sullivan, he goes, his alias is Artistic Cheese. He actually emailed and said, hey, Scott, why aren't you using Fiddler? to do these tests. Why are you using web browsers? And you know what? Uh, and I, I fully agreed with him, and I meant to do that the last couple weeks, and I really should have. It would have been much better than the web browser situation I was doing. So um, I'm going to use Fiddler, and this is going to be my browser experience instead. And let me do a real quick um, look here at some of the things we want to do. And if we go to the request builder, and if I go to contosa.com info.aspx, and let's execute that. I'm going to hit execute a bunch of times. Let's go back to our inspectors and our web view and let's select them. So if I select the first one, notice we hit node 8, select the next one, 9, and that time 9 and 8. So that time it didn't perfectly balance back and forth. Pretty close. 8, 9, 9, 8, 8, 9, 8. Back and forth. So this gives us some better insight because we don't have just this. We have uh, you know, a lot more information available on our headers. So if, as long as I remember, let's use Fiddler instead for a lot of this testing. So now what happens is this request goes through the ARR server, but we have a reverse proxy issue. And let's take a look at this video, this picture here, and we see what goes through here. What happens is as it goes through reverse proxy, this server, the ARR server, is the one that makes the request to the back-end web node. As a result, this web node is going to, in its web logs, it's going to actually record the IP of this server and not the IP of the original request. And so when you're trying to debug things, all of a sudden you have big issues. In fact, a couple years ago, I ran into a situation where we turned on ARR for the first time as a reverse proxy. Prior to that, I'd always use a different situation called direct server return. And so I wasn't used to the reverse proxy effect at the time. And what happened is the application we turned it on for was watching for blog spam in there uh, to make sure that people offering comments on the blogs weren't spamming. And all of a sudden they just turned off that feature was disabled and they're wondering why is this disabled? And it turned out the issue was because it looked like all the requests were coming from a single server. It was too aggressive and it turned it off. And so what we had to do is we had to avoid that by, and that's what we're going to cover today, how do we get around this reverse proxy effect? And so let's actually take a look to see it in action so you see what I mean. And so if we take these requests here that went back and forth, and I'm doing this for my own computer, and so for my own computer, if I do, let's just go out here to uh, what's, what's my IP.org and hit execute. We'll go to the inspector and take a look at this. And in our web view, it says my IP, and here's my IP, right? So what we want to make sure is that the web nodes see this IP. So actually, let's take a look now. We're going to go to one of the web nodes, and we'll go into the logs. So right here on the 29th, and I have... Uh, with, and you can see I'm recording this a bit in advance uh, when I'm releasing it. And so if I see from Fiddler, the requests are coming in, but look at the IP. The IP that we see is uh, that it's coming from, not going to, but coming from, which is this one, and it's actually the, the dot .30, which is the ARR server. In fact, if I go to the ARR server, see the dot .30. So all of these requests appear to be coming from the ARR server. And this is, if you're doing any kind of logic as the programmers, checking for this, you're going to run into issues. 
and also troubleshooting. You're trying to figure out where your requests come from. Also statistics for marketing purposes are all blown away. You got some issues here and it's not just ARR, it's any reverse proxy. You're going to have it with a big IP or anything else for a load balancer up front. Fortunately there's a solution that's uh, readily available and in fact if you go back and watch the week 30 lesson I talked about a staggered install and I installed this ARR helper. So let's take a look at this. If we go into is.net and search, it's a little bit hard to find, and search for ARR helper. And oh, we got a, there's a problem with the search I think today because, okay, now it's working. And so ARR space helper worked. And so we see here in nil was the one that wrote this a while ago. And we'll click one of these top two links. And he references it here, this helper. So let's follow this link. Okay, so this is the one by nil, Russia. And we're going to download the 64-bit install. And if you install this. Now, I'm not going to install it right now because we have to do a staggered install. We have to take the nodes out of rotation. Watch week 30 if you want to see how to do that. And so now, but I have it disabled. So let's now enable it to watch the difference before and after ARR helper is installed. So now we're going to go back to the DC node. Okay, I guess that's where I was. And we're going to go into IS share config and I had turned this off. Watch this. So I just commented out the ARR helper in the two places in the document where it existed. And I saved that because the share config is going to turn on both nodes at the same time. And now it's turned on. So let's go back to Fiddler. And we're going to go to our request builder. There. And we're going to go to pontoso.com slash info.spx. And you can notice our request. It worked. So now let's go to our web logs. And actually this is 08. So let's go to 08. That's this server. And we'll go to www.root. Or, sorry, I'm going to go to our logs and log files on the 29th. And now, notice this request coming in, but now we see something different. It's going to actually keep track in the logs of the ARR info, and also the request is now coming from the 69, 132, 61, 176. And if we went to what's my IP, it's different. This is confusing. Why is this? Uh, we have another opinion here. What is my IP.com, I think? Let's take a look at this. Yeah, there we go. Our IP is 69.132.161.176. What is my IP.com? And so we're going to go back to this one and that's the IP that it should show. So notice what the ARR helper does is it allows the correct IP to be shown. Now how does it do it? If you're wondering on how this is doing this, here's what happens is as it goes through the ARR node, and so let's go back to our ARR node, this one here, there's some headers that are injected on the way through. And in fact, if we're, let's go back to a request builder, or actually we can just grab one of these requests, info.aspx, now we're going to go to www.pontoso.com slash vars I had added, which uh, shows us, so we're going to go to this one, inspectors. And what that does is it shows us all these variables in the request. And notice that this X header, ARR, it adds a couple things. It adds the original URL, it's available to it, and it adds the forwarded for, this IP and port. And so what it does is when it goes to the ARR node in here, it sets these three variables off to the side. And actually there's more variables if you're using SSL. It adds them as well. And it also has a log, so you can tie things together in the logs. And then the ARR helper has this available. And it says, okay, this is great. I now have the X forwarded for information. Now we're going to drop it back again into the remote address and the remote host. And uh, now notice, see, the remote address and remote host are correct because ARR Helper has already been written. If I had ARR Helper turned off, 
then that's actually going to show as a server's IP instead. In fact, let's do it real quickly so we can get the idea on what's happening. And so back here, we'll go back into application request routing. Disable it. We'll go into here, make a new request, and now we're going to take a look at this request. And notice with ARR helper turned off, it now has the IP of the ARR server instead. And so that's the key difference. Remote host, remote address, and also the IS logs are able to be written back with that ARR helper, which means that man in the middle is completely eliminated as far as the web servers are concerned. They have no idea that there's a middleman in between. So that's what ARR helper does, and I encourage you to install that on every server with a reverse proxy. And actually this standard, the X forwarded for, and that's used by the big IP, it's used by other load balancers as well. So the ARR helper that you install will work with other load balancers also, and actually vice versa. I believe the big IP has one that you can install that probably works with ARR helper as well. So thanks for tuning in. We have a lot more to cover still upcoming regarding ARR. Uh, there's a lot more to understand to, to handle more difficult situations and handle them in different ways. So I hope you keep tuning in. Hope you have a great week. Thank you.